uh, and uh, the, this, uh, this series of experiments were done with, with almost uh, uh, operational resolution and, and uh, uh, again it was one month and it was uh, but we couldn't do many experiments like the ones that I showed you to show the quality of the forecast so I will just show you how if you implement if so the, it becomes a, a, a very strong tool for mo quality control monitoring so uh, uh, it, it, it is uh, done for 2012 and, and for that month uh, Sechun uh, uh, added up for each type of observation, all the EPSOS values for each observation for over six hours. So this part is negative, so all the observations, which are the majority here, are, 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 are beneficial, and, and, but all of these are detrimental, and they are not negligible. Uh, and, and it's very clear which instruments how how uh, uh, well I forgot to write the, yeah here it is Mo, modish winds for example has many uh, uh, not all the time but it has frequently uh, episodes of, of being detrimental and the information that this gives should be very helpful to find the the reason why but at least you know which observations are detrimental and which are, are not de detrimental. And there are other, other uh, less common episodes of being detrimental, like fireball and profile of wind. And, and uh, Ray, uh, Ray Winston showed this, this up and down, and it's because at 0 and 12 hours, we have lots of Ray Winston, and at 6 and 18 hours, we have few ray winds on, so that, that reflects that number of observations. And this is another example. This, uh, all the ray winds on in the world average for the month uh, are, are on the average uh, strongly positive, uh, I mean negative, so that they are beneficial. But, but in India, there are two stations that oh, average over the month, they are strongly det detrimental. And, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, then <coughs> uh, we can use this for, for uh, uh, checking different instruments like ray. Uh, so, uh, the, this is the Hertz uh, instrument that has been used forever almost and, and it, it's almost it's remarkable that channel 13 is, is, is almost completely detrimental and, and it has always been detrimental and uh, for multi channels this channel 13 appears uh, again and again uh, as detrimental whereas the rest are, are beneficial and, and the detrimental tend, tend to be uh, uh, near, near uh, when, where the maximum sensitivity is, is uh, around the thousand millibar so near the surface And even hyperspectral instruments can be analyzed this way. And uh, AIRS has that channel 13 here, and, and it, it shows uh, uh, that the maximum detrimental impact is, is near the, the surface. And uh, Ayasi uh, has has uh, uh, several, five uh, uh, and three more, that 
detrimental channels that are, are being used. So, Sechun uh, uh, did an experiment which was just very simple. Uh, he he uh, rejected the detrimental impact is mainly from the tropical region, so she rejected 16 channels out of hun many hundreds, and and he found that that uh, in this seven-day forecast, the the impact was clearly uh, 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 beneficial, uh, although the height seems a little bit less, but, but it's still net beneficial by more than 1%, just dropping the, not using the channels that he found were, ah, ah, were uh, detrimental. And here is a comparison of, of uh, uh, EFSO from 2012 and 2017 for Ayasi, Ayers, and Hers. And it's, it's quite <laughs> interesting that even though he used a different system and different observations, he gets exactly the same channels as being detrimental. And in the case of, uh, yeah, the, these are for airs and for hers, they are basically identical. And here they, they added a, a several beneficial channels, but also they added a, a, detrim, a few detrimental channels. So this is something easy to, to check. And Chris uh, has lots of, of uh, uh, beneficial channels and quite a number of, of uh, detrimental, which are again surface channels. So I, I would like to point out that Sechun uh, uh, invented uh, an EFSO browsing tool, and you you just uh, <laughs> instant you just choose the location you want, the time, the instrument, and you get EFSO. So this should be very <laughs> helpful to developers of. of and choosers of, of beneficial channels. And finally, I, I'm going to uh, give results uh, using the simplest experiment model, the Lorenz 1996. So you know this model, this is the, the equation that looks like it has uh, uh, advection and diffusion and and uh, has 40 variables, and we use the standard f equal to 8. And, and uh, uh, we run everything with 5,000 5, cycles with a spin up. And the ET, the, uh, as data simulation, we use the ETKF with 40 members and no localization or inflation. And, and the observations are obtained, are 40 variables one observation for for each location uh, from a nature run and uh, observation all the, all all the observations are follow uh, a gaussian distribution you know. there is no one that that's flawed in the sense that it's not part of the gaussian distribution so uh, uh, here is an experiment in which uh, the only thing that, that uh, Sechun did was to uh, compute the initial 40 variables, which are not in this order, but in the order of benef uh, detrimental to beneficial. So the only computation that he has done is, is to compute uh, order the observations by 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 uh, uh, how detrimental or beneficial is, and then he just ran forecast and plotted the error 
and this is after 10 steps, 20 and 30 steps. And you can see that, that uh, having uh, op, uh, op, the, the observations are, are, are not flawed, are, are, are completely perfect, but some are more beneficial and some are less beneficial or detrimental. When so, you say perfect, there's no sir? observation? When you say perfect, do you mean there's no observation error, or do you mean that there's, there's no, no, observation no, error? No, 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 the perfect. observation error is Gaussian. Right, and you know exactly what the state yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, no, it's not that the instrument fell down or something like that. And, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is how the model evolves. So if you, if you drop the, the first 10 uh, most detrimental, you, you, you get a, a forecast that, that, that's much more accurate. So uh, re rejecting the, the worst few detrimental observation provides most of the improvement and the improvement grows uh, with time because the errors grow. So the, the, this is growing exponentially in time. And even non-cycling PQC improves the forecast. And this is the where where we got lucky or um, magic worked. Uh, he, uh, we, we developed, uh, we, when, when, <coughs> when Daisuke Hota did for the first time uh, uh, EFSO and uh, with, with, with the GFS, and uh, and started with PQC, but without a, without uh, uh, cycling the results. So we we had only individual individual corrections. They didn't accumulate. But uh, we at that time we were. Uh, he was convinced, and I was convinced, and we were all convinced that the most accurate. Uh, uh, way to use it was to use the, to delete the detrimental observations was to redo the analysis, recompute the Kalman gain and then uh, not, not use the, the, the detrimental observations. So we call this PQC H and, and this is what we thought all that this is what we should do. Then uh, he, uh, uh, Sechun suggested other possibilities. One, one is, for example, increasing the, the R, the error co observation error covariance for the, for the bad observations, for the detrimental observations, so they get uh, less weight. And then another is just to to reuse the result obtained with, with the original F so K. So we call this PQC K and, and then some other uh, uh, clever possibilities that he thought. And, and, and then he uh, ob <laughs> obtained the results and, and uh, uh, this is the, during the analysis and and this is the error uh, depending on the rejected percentage and they all, uh, if you reject uh, uh, 50 or 60 or more percentage, they all get bad, but the one that gets less bad that lasts for 70 percent is, is the green, which is the, which is the reuse, the original EFSO, okay. And and uh, this is the after 30 steps of forecast, and the, it's even more impressive. The green remains uh, uh, best up to 70%. So, so 
PQC K is both beneficial and robust, it remains without bl it blowing up, and it's because it's the most consistent with the original EFSO. So the final conclusion is for this is that we just should, should compute EFSO and then re change the analysis by doing the changes that EFSO suggests without having to recompute anything. So, uh, 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 concluding remarks, and I'm getting to the end. Uh, uh, PQCK reusing the original Kalman gain is most efficient in computation and most accurate in the correction. PQC improves even the flawless observing system. So, he, uh, uh, you, he says, uh, uh, you can harvest additional information from the observations by knowing whether they are detrimental or uh, beneficial. And rejecting about 10% is uh, the most detrimental observations provides most of the improvements. And so, uh, su uh, summary, using future observations to do PQC. Advanced data simulation can be used to improve both the model and the observations. At t equal to zero, we use future six-hour observations to cre create a six-hour analysis that we use as the best estimate of the truth, and that's the only use that we use. Uh, we have two six-hour forecasts from, from, uh, from T0 to T6 hours, one which has used the observations and one which has not used the observations, the current observations. So identify the observations at, at the t equal to zero that make the six hour forecast worse using EFSO and here we use this temporary analysis at, after six hours <coughs> and the results with real of atmospheric observations and, and the realistic but inexpensive atmospheric models show large forecast improvements that last over eight days. EFSO is almost cost free and since it accumulates the improvements. It does not need to use future observations in operational MWP. It only requires an ensemble common filter or, or a hybrid. Uh, but or, or, or you can use uh, uh, a variational approach and use the FSO version. The reanalysis and, not other, and other data assimilation applications should use, should, should use future observations. And uh, here I would like to uh, go back to my memory. And I remember uh, Kiku Miyakoda, who was the first uh, who dared do monthly and seasonal forecast using numerical models. And, and uh, it was, uh, I remember that people were unconsciously or without thinking use maybe the climatology from the future or data from the future that, that uh, was, not, uh, was helpful for the experiment but not for the real forecast. So uh, Kiko Miyakoda said, if you want to improve forecast, never use future data. And, and I learned that very carefully. but. Uh, when, when I presented in Montreal uh, these ideas of EFSO and, and uh, proactive quality control, uh, he immediately got enthusiastic in, in after my talk and, and he said, we should use this for the next reanalysis. We already have all the observations, so why not use them? And he's absolutely right. We should use whenever possible the the, the observations and, and so at this point I would say uh, EFSO PQC is simple, low cost and effective and why not use it to improve all data simulation application no, not just for the weather but for trees or, or whatever uh, Takemasa is leading other groups to, to 
to use apply data simulation. So uh, I guess we finished. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for this nice presentation. Do we have questions?